Hey everyone and welcome to today's video which is luxury purchases that I just don't use. So these are my least used items that I've bought and so it's my own fault for getting them. Some of them it really is my own fault, they just were not right for me and some of them are awful so I'm going to cover an array of things today. So if we start off, so I've tried not to pick out things that I just don't use as much as I should or items that are duplicate because I don't think that's particularly useful in today's video but I've picked out a few items that I just don't like so let's get straight into it. So first of all this item, it's not a case that I don't like it, it's a case that it just does not fit with my lifestyle whatsoever. So I got this just over a year ago. I keep it in its box because it's the safest place for it. So I saw this displayed on the wall in the shop and I just thought it was absolutely beautiful. And it's got all the padlocks and the lovely chains on it and it's just so pretty and I love the colour. And for me a silk square is a really nice purchase because I often wear cami tops particularly in kind of springtime and it's nice to have something that covers my cleavage a little bit. So I just thought this was a really good purchase. However, the very first time that I wore it I wrapped it around my neck and then I did the craziest thing, I drank a glass of water and there must have been a drip on the bottom of the glass and it went straight onto here and it put a big stain on it so I was gutted. So I took it off, brought it home and then Come to think of it, probably if water marks it, steaming is not going to be a great idea, but that is what I did. I steamed it because it was crinkly, it had a bit of foundation on it, and it had this big water mark on it. And then obviously, yeah, it makes sense now, the steaming really seemed to mark it. It does say on the label, dry clean only. It says you can iron it, <laughs> so yes. But I think the main point I'm trying to make is that a drip of water seemed to mark it, and that really frustrated me. And I'm sure it's only visible to me, and particularly if it's roost around my neck, you really can't see the staining as much as I can, but I know it's there, and it takes the edge off my enjoyment of the item, and ultimately, these pieces are for me. So if I don't like them, if I don't feel they feel special, what's the point in having them? But it is really pretty, so I am gutted about it actually. I wonder if I should just get it dry cleaned now because it's got foundation marks on it and all sorts. It really looks a little bit of a mess. And again, I am sure I could hide this. If I just put it on right, I'm sure I could hide it, but it doesn't feel special if you know it's marked all over. So it's just one of those. Also, it crinkles, it crinkles a lot. And so if I can't steam it, well, I should iron it. I'm just not really good at ironing. I could ask Mark to have a go at ironing it, we'll see. Or I might get it dry clean so it looks really pretty and then do what they do in a mess, you know, where they put the magnets in each corner of the scarf and pin it up on the wall because I think that would look so nice actually on the wall of my dresser. I'm turning my dresser into a shop here. I can't fit it out because we've always said if we ever have a baby this will become a nursery. So I can't get fitted wardrobes, which I would really, really like. But I can do little things like put this on the wall. So I'm really tempted to get the magnets so that I can pin this up. I wouldn't buy the Hermes ones, they just have the Hermes mark upon the magnets I'm happy to get from Amazon, but I might display this on the wall after I've had it dry cleaned, we'll see. So yeah, I'm really gutted about this really because I love my scarves and my shawls that I have from Louis Vuitton. I think their quality is fantastic. And maybe I am just too mucky for a silk square, so. Next up we have an item which seems to feature in most worst luxury purchases list. And it is a pair of Le Boutins. Boutins, I can't say it properly. I know, it's fine. Um, heels, I've got the Pigals in the medium heel height. I do love the red sole so much. Now, I know this is my least used items video and these are some of my least used items and yet look at the destruction on that. And look, it's even come off on the toe and I think it's done that on both. Yes, the toes have come off on both of these shoes. I just really hate that. It feels so mucky. For a really expensive pair of shoes, for that destruction to be there after probably two to three wears is appalling. So I bought these even though I'd seen so many luxury reviews where people said they're agony, don't buy them, because I smugly went into the shop, put them on my feet and thought, oh, they're so comfortable. And I thought I was different to everybody else. I'm not, I'm exactly the same. I walked up and down and I said, I don't know what people are complaining about. And the sales assistant must have known <laughs> that I was going to suffer the same fate as everyone else. Because when I got home, I thought, right, I'll save them for a special occasion. And I'm very nervous with new shoes because I hate going out and then feeling trapped in shoes that are uncomfortable. So the first time I wore them, even though I was fairly confident, at the time we were living in a lovely village where they have amazing restaurants. So we decided to go out with friends for dinner one night and we went literally across the road. So I put these on for the first time and I struggled to get across the road. They were agony. So we had our meal and then afterwards I thought, right, I'm going to go home and change them. And I struggled to walk home in them to the point where I took them off in the middle of the road and walked barefoot the rest of the way home. Even though it can't have been more than like 50 to 100 steps, it really wasn't far. So I then tried to wear them on a couple more occasions just in case it was my feet that day that had been different to in the store. But no, they were just agony. They were really unpleasant. I hated every single second of wearing them. And it's such a shame because I think the red soles are so beautiful 
beautiful but I think I'd be better off getting a pair of high street shoes and then using nail varnish to paint the soles red. You might think that will look hideous but you should see how I walk in these, that is pretty hideous. I would rather have tacky shoes than walk like, no, not a good purchase for me. Next up we have a purchase that I'm really surprised I included in this because I always thought I would wear this so so much and I haven't and I've had it a good few years now and I think I've worn it maybe two or three times I just felt really awkward and it is my Chanel brooch it's just the CC brooch I have a lovely little brooch here it's got the silvery kind of pearls and then some gemstones on it as well there's no wear and tear on this at all because it has hardly been worn but I just feel so awkward wearing it. The reason that I went for this particular brooch is because it was the cheapest one on the day when I was in Chanel. That was the reason. But I did like some of the other ones that are crystal and very, very pretty, but I wanted to go for the most inexpensive because I didn't have much money at the time. So I do think this is pretty. I do think this is prettier than some of the more expensive ones, to be fair. But I've tried wearing it on a number of occasions and I feel so awkward. I feel like a brownie with her Chanel badge. Look, I like Chanel is how I feel. I feel like I'm trying to be something I'm not or really fashionable. And I like fashion, obviously, but I wear comfy clothes a lot of the time. And when I do dress up, if I pop this on, I feel like I'm trying to make whatever I'm wearing look like it's Chanel. I have this jacket from Hobbs that I absolutely love. It's the Elise jacket. And it's almost Chanel shaped, but it's not trying to be a Chanel jacket. And I thought when I got it, ooh, this will be like really nice to have my Chanel brooch on. But when I put it on, I feel like I have a fake Chanel jacket rather than just a nice Hobbs jacket with a Chanel brooch on. I think my issue is that I don't view this as jewellery, not like a necklace or earrings or anything else. I feel like I'm trying to make my clothes into something they're not. And it's my own issue because I love seeing these on other people. I think they're so, so pretty. I've seen people put them on simple jumpers or over scarves, just really pretty. On jackets, they look so nice. Oh, I really like them on hats as well. I think they're super cute. But when I wear it, I just feel like a fraud. <laughs> I don't know if anyone understands where I'm coming from or if you all think I'm just mad. The thing with my channel is I do try to be very honest about how I feel with my purchases and yeah, that's how this one makes me feel. So it's a shame because I really wanted one. I remember watching Ali Valentine many years ago with this and well, she had a very pretty crystal one and thinking it looked so, so stunning. And so I thought I will get one. And I just didn't feel like it gave me that rush that everything else does. It made me feel a bit self-conscious and awkward. So I feel like it's maybe just unnecessary branding, but on me, not on anybody else, if that makes sense. I love seeing these on other people. I think people dress them up beautifully. I really like brooches as well. This is the other thing. When I was younger in particular, I used to like my little brooches. I was a very old teenager, like you've no idea. But I do like them, but this, I don't know. Does anyone follow? I'm just rambling now. I really like Dior's brooches as well. They have a really cute, you know, like the ones the staff wear in Dior. I just think they're really, really nice. But again, I'm sure that would make me feel exactly the same. Yeah, stick this on a necklace or a pair of earrings and I'm okay. So I know I'm hypocritical, but I just feel awkward with a badge on. I feel like I need a sash with all my different brands and brooches on. That would actually be quite cute. Anyway, you can see why I'm not a fashion designer. <laughs> Let's move on swiftly, shall we? Um, next is an item that I shouldn't have bought because it doesn't suit my body. And it is from Gucci and it is the Gigi belt. This is such a pretty belt. It's so nice. It's the big, thick, chunky porcelain rose belt and it's got the nice big GG on the front. So I've worn this rarely at best. So I got this really to wear around my waist and hips and I just think they look so cool on people. I think they're really nice. I know it's big branding, but I actually quite like this. I think it's love the tarnished hardware. I think it's so pretty, but you've got to look at your own body before you buy things, I think, sometimes. And when I put this on me, it draws attention to probably my least good bit, <laughs> to be fair. I think I had a delusional moment. Um, so yeah, it's not the most flattering thing on my figure. The thing that I've done with this sometimes is wear it underneath my bust as kind of an empire line belt, which looks okay, it does, but it doesn't quite go tight enough. And also, because this is quite big and you're trying to fit it underneath my chest here, it doesn't look the best. But it does cinch in. I have a poncho that I wore, I put it on Instagram ages ago. It's a Ted Baker poncho that goes really nicely with this over the top. It doesn't flatter me, so I knew that when I got it. I just thought it was cute and I couldn't resist. I'm a big believer that you should dress your own body first and then trends and fashion and things later. I don't think that's as important as just buying something that flatters your shape and figure. I'm very tempted to hang on to this because my body weight does change quite a lot um, depending on what I'm doing. Sometimes I get very into weightlifting 
and at those times I tend to go really quite lean and I think this would look quite nice. Next up we have an item that I'm not going to talk a lot about because I've mentioned this many times but it is my Speedy B25 from Louis Vuitton but my Speedy B25 is my least used handbag in my full collection. It is a really cute little bag, there's nothing wrong with it. The problem for me was that I bought this at a time when I was too nervous with Vachetta to use it comfortably and now I have other bags that are kind of more my style that I use more. The 25 is super adorable, it's really nice but the one thing that lets it down for me is that I wish the mouth was bigger. It's not appallingly small but compared to some of my other bags the access into this isn't as good. So I do think I need to sell this at some point. I'm having so many inquiries from you guys about pricing and things like that. I haven't worked it out yet. I don't even know where to start to be honest. It's a really cute item. There's nothing wrong with it. It's just I bought it at the wrong time and not understanding what I needed enough and now I have items that suit me a little bit better. So but it is really cute. Every time I get it out, I just think, why don't I use it? It is so adorable. Next up, I just thought I'd throw in a skincare item because it really frustrated me. But this is my Capture Total from Dior. So I love Dior skincare. I think it's really nice. I have very irritated skin. I have bad rosacea up my cheeks and it generally just looks a mess. And I find that Dior's products are very soothing and very nice. And actually the Capture Total is no exception whatsoever. The product is lovely. This costs over £100, I'll pop the price down below, it is extortionate but literally with my skin I will try anything once to see if it will improve it. So I tried this and I actually quite liked it, it's a really nice thick cream to use at night before you go to bed but after about two to three uses, this is my second pot, if you look at the mechanism on the pot here, that little plastic bit inside here that snapped clean off on my pot and so if you look at the mechanism of closing it the actual pot needs a bit of compression so simply folding the top of the pot shut won't close the pot so actually to try and keep the product fresh after I'd snapped the lock I put brown tape around it and put a book on top of it so I thought right that's unusable now because in a morning or in an evening when I'm in a rush or when I want to relax I'm not going to take the buff and unwind all the brown tape and then put my moisturiser on and then put it back that's completely obscene but I thought I can't take back a hundred and odd pound pot of moisturiser and say well look I snapped it. Anyway I was in Dior a couple of weeks later I happened to mention that's what I'd done just in passing while they were doing my makeup they said bring it back in and they'd sort it out so Dior are fantastic at sorting out problems. However I've now got a new pot but now I'm so paranoid every time I use it that I'm going to snap the lock that I can't enjoy using it the same and I tend to use other products when I can because I can't for shame break it again and then take it back. Now I thought this was just something unique to me being really heavy handed but I've actually come across a lot of people who've had exactly the same problem and so I do think it is more of a design flaw than an individual issue. So I do think Dior need to rethink their packaging of these little pots which is a shame because they are cute but I'm going to avoid anything that comes in this style of pot. I like the prestige items from Dior. They're really fancy and they are really expensive but their pots are screw top so I feel safer with those. But the product is really nice. I really do like Dior skincare and I will do a full video on the items that I've got because I've got quite a bit and it does all do quite different stuff to my skin. So yeah, that is the Dior Capture Total. Great product, awful packaging. We're down to the last two items now and Second to last is an item I have used a few times but it's something that I didn't use anywhere near as much as I thought I would and that is a wok. Now not specifically this wok, I didn't want to hold up my wedding wok because that is not going in my least used items video for sentimental purposes but this is my Diorama long wallet from Dior which is a really good wok if you use woks. I personally am not a wok lover. It's that little bit too small to be practical for me because I can't get my keys in my six ring key holder in here and my phone. And if I can't get those two things, I'm not going to use it. If it was a tiny bit bigger, it would be perfect. That little bit of a difference in size between the wok and the palace clutch is all the difference between something being incredibly functional and usable and something being that little bit too small. Inside my palace clutch I can get my phone, my keys, I can get a small wallet or a card holder and a little bit more and that is perfect for taking out and actually in reality the size of those two items is not that much different and yet the versatility of the two is entirely different. The inside of the wok you have all these card slots and you have a zip compartment. I am too lazy to empty my wallet into this. I initially thought oh I'll be one of these people who I will be super organised and put everything where it should be. 
I know me now, I'm lazy, that's not going to happen. They are put in here as a big chunk of things and they're removed as a big chunk of things, which is a shame. But if I'm going to use something for five minutes, I'm not going to spend all that time arranging it normally. If I didn't work and had all afternoon to get ready for a party or something like that, in reality, I tend to run in from work, try and do something possibly with my hair, don't have time for makeup, grab a bag and go out. That is how I go out in an evening when I very rarely do. I don't have the time, as much as it would be one of my priorities, because I like bags and accessories, to arrange all my items in here. It's not usually physically possible for me to do something like that. So as much as I actually think the Dior Long Wallet is an amazing walk, it's just, it's a bit too small, a little bit too small for me. I'm not a what girl really. So I like my bigger bags where I can, but if I want a smaller bag, I tend to go for my pal's clutch or my mini Lady Dior, which I've put my Twilly on behind me. That brings me on to my final item in today's video, which I'm a little bit embarrassed about because I thought I would have used this loads and I was so excited to get it. But let me just grab it off the floor. It is on the floor in its lovely uh, coat bag, but it is my Burberry trench coat. I've worn this once and I didn't really wear it again, hmm, no, I've put it on two or three times after that because I got a little pluck on the front, where is it now? A little one there and a little one there. I got two tiny little plucks on it on the first time I wore it out and it made me so nervous that I didn't wear it again, uh, which I know is really bad. But I just kind of thought after I got a little tiny bit of damage on it for the price, because they're really expensive, I would save it for special occasions. And once I start saving something for special occasions, I will hardly ever use it. With the exception of handbags where I give considerable time to thinking about my handbag, when it comes to clothes, once they're in a certain area of my wardrobe, they're not getting touched. And unfortunately, that is what has happened with my Burberry Trench. I do want to get it out again this year. As we head into autumn, this is the perfect time for me to be wearing it. So that was part of the reason I did this video. When I saw this hanging in the guest room wardrobe, I thought, right, okay, time to look through items I'm not using, decide if I'm going to use them, and then if I'm not going to use them, put them in a vlog sale, because it's just a little bit wasteful. And at the moment in this house, it's by no means a big house, but it's equally not a particularly small house. It's just kind of an average-ish house. And we filled it between two of us who are never here anyway, because we're both always working everywhere or working from home, but we're always working. We have filled this place with stuff that we don't use. So part of my motivation for doing this video today was to kind of address that. But yes, I really want to get this out because I do think it's pretty and I think it would look really nice with some of my beige handbags that I don't use. So yeah, I think I'm just going to get over it and put it back on and if I damage it, I damage it. That's what I think with shoes. I'm not conscious with shoes. I just go out and I wear them and I accept they're going to get damaged. Handbags, I baby them. I try to treasure them for as long as possible so that they don't get damaged. Clothes, I'm not really a big designer clothes person. I don't really have any designer clothes. So it's all new, it's all scary, and I'm trying to work out how to wear them. Just if there's any doubt as to how much I've worn this. The tag is still on. And yeah, I, I don't know if I was, I wasn't ever anticipating returning it. I don't think I ever really considered returning it because I just don't return things wherever possible. I just don't. And I think that's because I used to work in Next when I was younger and it was my favorite job that I've ever done. I thoroughly enjoyed it. I loved organizing things and then replenishing things and doing the till and seeing what people were buying. I just loved it. Um, yeah, why, why have I picked my direction in life? <laughs> I really did enjoy it so much. Um, so yeah, I don't know why I left the tag on. I just I haven't got comfortable with it yet. Before buying most of my luxury goods, I've done considerable research and really thought them through. So it is unusual for me to buy things that I don't really use at all. But that being said, sometimes you buy something and just realize it's not for you. I really wanted these for the longest possible time before I got them. And I probably should have just heeded more warnings off YouTube because everyone said about the soles and they were uncomfortable. But you always think you're special. <laughs> I don't know why. So yeah, that really didn't work. But yeah, I'm really happy to have such a small number of items that I don't really use that often. I'm a bit disappointed with the coat. I will try and get into using that again. But that's pretty much it. Just to let you know, today I am filming a vlog. I've been doing it since I woke up this morning. So hopefully that will be uploadable. We'll see, it might not work. I will go back to trying to film that now and I will see you guys very shortly. I hope you're having a really great week. Speak to you soon.